Hey everyone. Uh, so I thought it might be fun to put the drone up for this little garden stroll. We can stroll via drone and actually walk around the yard, but it's probably our last chance to take a look at fall color here because it is waning quickly. I was still looking at a memory that popped up in my Instagram. I think there's dirt on my nose. Um, on my Instagram today, and oh boy, first of all, I'll just go like this. Oh boy, Lake Michigan is beautiful today. Uh, anyway, and it was actually me walking around the yard remarking how gorgeous the fall color was. This was from last year. And it was. Last year's fall color was just absolutely just outstanding. So much better than this year. I'm assuming that's, you know, partly caused by drought. So we have not had frost yet. Uh, I know inland from us, they've had a couple of them already. So some things like, look at the window box. I mean, still looking pretty darn good here. Um, the scavola, which I thought I had too much of, I pruned it and now it's like the perfect little accent there. We've got, I think that's Evolution Salvia. I picked it up at the hardware store. Um, even the super beanas and the super bells are looking good. We've got the uh, jasmine, Fiona Sunrise jasmine, the top, which I still need to go in there and dig out, but I'm a little reluctant to do it sooner than I have to because it's gonna, I'm not gonna be able to do that without disturbing the whole window box. So pretty amazing to have that looking good. The fall containers are still looking good, I think, anyway. And uh, well, the whole garden is looking actually pretty darn good, I think. I did an absolute ton of stuff in the garden today, uh, which felt great. Uh, it's really nice to have these warm days to work in. I would not be nearly as um, uh, busy and happy in the garden if it weren't so um, just nice and warm. I don't know what the temperature's been today, but warm enough that I've been happy about it. Thomas Edison is keeping putting out blooms. They are beauties. They are absolute beauties. I've been cutting them and bringing them in. They're gorgeous. That's a good, good, good dahlia. Uh, the um, sun patients, completely unfazed by anything. I would say this willow is looking a little, this one has always been a little anemic compared to the other one. Uh, I've been trying to give them water. It's, you know, it's hard to work up the energy to keep up on watering annuals at this time of year. Uh, but speaking of annuals, there's the banana, banana too. Uh, looking just freaking fabulous, fabulous, particularly with the maple behind it. It's probably not as good right now because we're starting to get a little lower in the um, lights. The sun is getting lower in the sky now, but it's really beautiful with that bright blue uh, autumn sky. And I actually think I kind of like the shredded leaves. I think it's good texture. Anyway, I don't know when she's coming out. Maybe, probably next weekend. Um, I don't think, well, I am highly hesitant to start predicting when the frost is going to come because every year um, I'm wrong and then I'm caught off guard. I just hope we get a light frost before we get a freeze. Last year we went straight into a hard freeze. Um, the other banana got hit hard and I think I almost lost it. So it's kind of playing with fire at this point, but there's nothing in the forecast. The lowest temperature in the forecast that I saw uh, through November 8th was 38 degrees but it can change very quickly. Anyway, uh, my theory is that uh, Lake Michigan was so warm for so long this year, and I don't know what the temperature is right now of the lake, but I think the lake, well, obviously that's why we haven't gotten a frost here, but I think the lake is keeping us warmer longer than usual. So the, um, what was the name of this salvia? Something orange salvia. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'd grow it again. I'm not sure I'd grow it here again, but I think it's a good look. So I'd grow it again. Obviously, I love the um, Wygela uh, Midnight Sun. And over here, the Wild Magic Basil. Three. This is three plants that you see here. Is obviously gone. Cocoa Bananas. Um, but it's really pretty and, you know, smells just actually, I think it's like one of the better smelling basils too. 
it's so good. Uh, very, well, we'll be repeating wild, well, wild magic basil will always have a spot in this garden as long as I can find it. And, uh, this is a pretty good spot for it. There might be other ones too, but maybe actually in here, you know, maybe mixing wild magic basil in here with something really bright and poppy. Hmm. We have time obviously to figure that out. Uh, let's stroll, shall we? So, you know, this is the time of year when I like to find autumn color in unexpected places. And I would say, uh, Solomon seal. I think it dies beautifully. Also, the Bottle Brush Buckeyes are doing something kind of strange. They are sort of like coloring up on one side only. Two of them are doing this. The gold cut side is beautiful. The sun is going to be pretty harsh in your eyes here. Sorry about that. Beautiful grass, millennia, transparent. So pretty. In fact, if I can get this angled right, with the sun blocked. I mean, can you see how ethereal and beautiful that is? I've got a lot of it. I don't have a lot of it, but I have multiples of it in the garden. And I think it's, I think it's a pretty, pretty fabulous grass. Um, I can show you this over um, on the other area too, but here's um, Serious Stigma, a hardy, uh, hardy plumbago in its fall color, this beautiful fall red color. So pretty. Um, obviously, I just planted those as plugs this year, so they aren't big or anything right now. I've been sort of pulling things out of these pots as I'm looking for them. There's a couple other things that could be salvaged out of them probably still. And then we'll come over here and we'll need to water everything. Uh, well, I've been debating saving some of the begonias. I don't think I'm going to. Oh, I wanted to come over here. We'll swing back this way. Um, this is Bowman's root. Um, Galenia, G I L. ENA, I think. I've been noticing the fall color on this plant. This is a nice little native. And here, this, these plants are better up here where the sun is, is tough too here. But hopefully you can kind of see a sort of a golden color. I think that's just kind of a nice, I mean, you don't necessarily see that on perennials all the time. I think it's pretty nice. Uh, we've obviously started doing, you know, some, there's some fall cleanup happening. The deer cleaned that up for me. Do you remember how big this hosta was in June? Uh, it was in a thumbnail and look at that. unbelievable. Um, last week I pointed out the monk's hood, which is looking quite beautiful still. And especially now that the climbing hydrangea is starting to yellow up a little bit, a couple of people, um, nicely pointed out that monk's hood is very poisonous. I think I've said that in multiple videos, actually. Yep. That's why I grow it. So I've always put that in the back of the garden bed, not the back, but like the middle of it, uh, so that dogs are kept away from it. Um, it is very poisonous, but you know, the poisonous plant thing, let me show you, let me show you another plant that's super poisonous. Here we go. Highly poisonous hydrangeas more poisonous hydrangeas. Um, I'm sure I'm looking for some other plants around here that I know are poisonous. Um, all kinds of them. So no one ever says to me in a video, Aaron, you showed a hydrangea and you didn't mention, you know, people should know that that's poisonous. Um, 
So now I'm telling you, hydrangeas are very poisonous. So not as, po not as bad as that one. But my point here is that there's a ton of, oh, here, let's look at another poisonous plant. Toxic, poisonous, maybe I should be saying toxic instead of poisonous. Here's another one right here, hellebores, also very toxic. So my point here is that most of probably the plants that you grow in your garden have some level of toxicity. And I think you just have to be smart. I do think it's important to know things like monkshood, like you don't cut monkshood and bring it into your garden, or excuse me, bring it into your house in a bouquet, because that would be ridiculous. You really, you know, so, and you would do that with hydrangeas. But if your concern is that you have kids or animals around that might eat your plants, you need to be just as worried about the hydrangeas um, and other things like the hellebores. Fun fact, for weeks, no, months, all summer long, I've been talking about this beautiful um, dahlia here and how I didn't know where it came from. I didn't know what it was. I thought maybe it came in like a proven winners mix. And then I started tagging my dahlias today and all of these purple ones are labeled Cornell bronze. Now, of course, they are not Cornell bronze. This is Cornell bronze. So Aaron's bad dahlia labeling strikes again. It's clearly a dahlia I've grown in the past and I don't know which one. I'll have to look around and I'll recognize it when I see it. But so all this time that I've been telling you I didn't know what this dahlia was, I still don't know what it is, but it's not new. It was not new for me this year. This is um, Glow Girl Spirea. I have two Spireas that I very much like. Glow Girl, which is the birch leaf Spirea, and um, uh, Blue Kazoo. No, Blue Kazoo, right? Yeah, I think that's it. Anyway, I like that one too, those two very much. Look at this little shot through here. So pretty. Anyway, uh, the birch leaf Spirea glow girl gets nice fall color on it some of them do get really nice fall color i think that candy corn one gets nice fall color since we've got the backlighting working for us here we'll just take a quick look at um just champion gold towel here which is beautiful there's another millennia transparent right there actually everything you can't go wrong with golden hour light coming through ornamental grasses I think I mentioned last week that I have basically finished. Oh, here, I'll show you something. You're going to see this in a video, so act surprised. But a lot of people are missing the videos. And something weird's going on. I don't know what it is. So um, I just sometimes I repeat things in multiple videos because I don't assume that anyone's seen all of them. Just a moment of appreciation for the two beaches over there so beautiful i do miss our remember when our, our giant one fell down a couple of years ago which is so sad but those beech trees are gorgeous anyway i don't know if you notice anything different through here but there's more of a gap i did some clearing out in here and you can see it all in that video when that video goes up but what i like about this is that it's giving the tricolor beach some room to breathe uh visually i don't think it was crowded um but i think visually it needed it, it was you were we were losing how beautiful this tricolor beach is um, which is crispy right now because you know fall but uh opening this up i think was a good call here's a plant with um kind of interesting fall color this is Arixa japonica uh i don't know much about this plant except that i've had it for god 12 years at least and uh and it's fun and nothing eats it. And it has this shiny foliage. And actually the foliage doesn't, not right now, but like in spring, it smells, it's got kind of a lime smell to it. Uh, and it's a nice little plant, but it gets this kind of interesting blush shade of fall color. Let's make our way around this way. Now, one thing that does not age nicely is this Aurelia silver umbrella which just like 
collapses in fall. I, well, and actually the Sun King Aurelia does the same thing. They just sort of fall apart. So that is, there's nothing attractive looking there. The branches just kind of fall off of it. Um, the structure is nice. I mean, the, the actual physical structure of the tree is nice in winter, but it's not a great thing to look at in fall. Uh, banana number one is actually looking very healthy. Uh, the leaves look so healthy. It's so much more protected over here than the other one is. Uh, the leaves look extraordinarily healthy. I love it with that bright pink dahlia underneath it there. The sort of the color on the limelights this year has been bad because it's just been so dry. Um, Like I said last week, I've stopped deadheading dahlias and stuff. I just am letting them do their thing. They're going to be shot soon anyway. Um, I have been collecting seed, not from the dahlias over here, but from the dahlias that I grew uh, from Florette and had in the vegetable garden. Um, and so that's fun. So that'll be an interesting experiment to see how those, how those do. I've never collected seed from dahlias before. I never thought I cared because I always wanted to know what varieties I was going to be growing. So I figured, you know, because you don't know what you're going to get with seeds, I don't have a lot of room for plants that I don't know what they're going to be. But I did find some room in the vegetable garden this year. And, uh, um, I think I'll do that again next year. So I thought maybe this year the climbing hydrangea would get to the pergola, but it came pretty close, but it didn't. I would say this particular branch was probably halfway over the door in spring, so we probably put on another three feet of growth. I would say if it keeps doing what it's doing, it should be there by next year, I think. It is such a good, I mean, that it is a good look. I think. There's still some grave tie beauty clematis blooming up here. Grave tie beauty, well, like all clematis, has beautiful, beautiful seed pods. Or seed, excuse me, seed heads. So pretty. Then they get fuzzy later. So this is the seeds right here. But this is the stage that I love them in these swirly little things. Um, okay, so check out the color on the rosy teacups dogwood. This is the tree. I mean, I think we probably have to give rosy teacups like tree of the year in this yard because in addition to the fact that she bloomed for, I think five weeks, maybe more here, she is putting on an absolutely excellent color show. And I don't know if I missed this in the past or if I just don't remember it, but it's, you know, this is a deep wine deep wine color here. And we looked at it last week, but the color has just intensified and gotten so much better. And this red, of course, is really good with the blue globe spruce. By the way, I highly recommend that if you're going to plant this tree, plant it by a blue evergreen because every part of this, every time this tree is looking good, it looks that much better because it's next to that blue evergreen. I did not expect that at the time, but it certainly worked out well. Here's the Verbena Bampton, which has gotten as tall as it ever has. Kind of this crazy wiry looking thing. I'll be chopping this back soon, but I like to leave a lot of opportunities for these seeds to fall around. I don't actually know how you, I don't, I don't know when they fall. I don't know much about how the seed situation works on this plant. I just know that it reseeds readily around the garden and then I just move the seedlings around. So that's a total win for me. Um, I didn't make that happen, but a, li a white limelight flower mixed with a blue pop star flower is pretty phenomenal.
All of the uh, Euphorbia, this is Euphorbia Ascot Rainbow. By the way, this gets a little bit of fall color too, a little bit of pink on it. Um, is looking really, really good. This overwintered for me last year. Um, it doesn't always. So I will leave it in the ground. It's just kind of questionable whether it'll come back or not. But last year, it, it was a champ. Everything came back last year. Though. I mean, last year was not a year to judge anything by because it was such a mild winter. Unfortunately, the fire spire hornbeams have really lost their leaves in the last couple of days, but these have been excellent fall color. Really beautiful. I wish they held their leaves for just a little longer. Maybe they will when they're a little bit more mature. Uh, this is Legends of the Small Fothergilia. Beautiful fall color on that. Just trying to see if there's anything else in here that's got some fall color. Um, I have to say, the skylight boxwoods have grown so much. Don't look at the weeds in here. That's coming up. I can't believe how much they've grown. I mean, those were planted last year in gallon pots. They were maybe, I don't know, 10 inches tall or something. So they are looking so good. Even the clethora gets a little bit of autumn color to it, which is really pretty with the seed heads and then the autumn color on the leaves. No sign of color yet on the pagoda dogwoods, at least the ones over here. The ones at the end of the driveway are starting to go, but they usually get pretty good fall color. And no sign of fall color at all here on Kodiak Red um, Bush Honeysuckle Dervilla. I don't, I thought they were supposed to get good fall color. Nothing happening yet. Maybe that happens later. These are, these are huge, by the way. Considering those were all planted last year, last May, they're pretty big plants. They're good. I like them. They're, they're nice plants and they're really low maintenance. So, um, more really nice skylights over there too. Oh, and then, um, interestingly enough, this, um, Japanese maple, this is, um, Acer Shirazawa, um, uh, Moonrise does not get great fall color. It gets really pretty spring color. Um, and then it has this kind of light chartreuse green, but it doesn't get great fall color. Um, but this chartreuse green looks so pretty against all the other fall colors that are out. So it's always a good combination. In fact, you probably saw that in the, um, in the drone video. It was pretty obvious in the drone video from what I could see anyway, when I was shooting it. <laughs> so little Nicotiana was a, was a late reseeder. And it's just looking fabulous there. The uh, window box, the drip irrigation just ran. Window boxes, draining. Um, one perennial that I think we should, that is often grown for fall color for good reason, is Amsonia hubrechtii, which you see is the bright yellow there, which is so 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 good especially coming up behind the foliage, which is kind of purpley right now. I was just watering these guys today because they were so dry. Uh, that's tiny, tough stuff, hydrangea. And then you get that beautiful um, Amsonia hubrechtii in there. Uh, grow some Amsonia. I, I promise you'll be happy. All right, I'm going to pose here by this beautiful Thomas Edison dahlia because we must enjoy them while we can. All right. That's the stroll for you. A little shorter today. I did get a couple of postcards in the mail, but I'm going to catch up with them next week rather than this week. So we will do that then. Uh, so if you sent something, I probably have it. And uh, it's probably really annoying to hear that water dripping. Probably making everyone have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Let me step away from the draining window box. Um... I did a uh, very quick tutorial on how to divide lungwort pulmonaria because so many people had asked for that. It's like six minutes long and it's very much quick and to the point. Uh, so there's not a lot of, not a lot of fluffing around on that one, which I think people like in a tutorial. And then I also did an experiment with planting my garlic this year. So if you missed that one, if that's something that's interesting to you, uh, you can see what we did with that. Have a great day in your garden. You should see this Sunday morning if you're catching in when it first goes up. So I hope you're having a really productive day in your garden uh, and enjoying what we have here of the gardening season. As long as the weather stays nice, I'm fine with this type of, with gardening at this time of year. I just don't like to do it when it's like snow.
All right. See you soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.